Getting blood drawn is a routine part of modern healthcare. It feels simple. You show up, a phlebotomist does their job, and you wait for a call from your doctor. But the accuracy of that multi-page report depends heavily on what you do in the 24 hours before the needle ever touches your skin. Simple oversights, things you might not even think twice about, can corrupt the data. That corruption can lead to the inconvenience of a repeat visit. But more seriously, it can lead to flawed medical decisions based on bad information. Hello, I'm Doctor, a clinical pathologist. My job is to ensure the results coming out of the lab are as accurate as possible. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the 10 most frequent pitfalls patients encounter before their blood work and show you how to sidestep them. Let's begin with the number one source of confusion, misunderstanding what fasting truly means. I recently reviewed the case of a patient whose triglyceride levels were alarmingly high. When we called to clarify, he insisted he'd fasted perfectly. When pressed, he mentioned his morning routine, a healthy glass of warm lemon water with a spoonful of honey. That's the problem. For a lab test, fasting means absolute caloric silence. That means no coffee, even black, no herbal tea, no diet sodas, and definitely no gum or breath mints. The only thing permitted is plain water. Even trace amounts of sugar or artificial sweeteners can trigger an insulin response, distorting your glucose readings and significantly inflating your lipid panel results. When fasting is required, plan for a minimum of 8 and often 12 hours where your only permitted beverage is plain, unflavored water. If you're ever in doubt, call the lab or your doctor's office. The second mistake is taking fasting to an extreme or arbitrarily stopping medications. Some patients, wanting to be extra careful, will fast for 16 or 18 hours and stop all their pills. This is equally problematic. Prolonged fasting can induce hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, particularly if you are on medications for diabetes. This can result in lightheadedness, brain fog, or even fainting at the lab. If you take such medications, you must get clear instructions from your physician on whether to take or hold your morning dose. Even more critical is the decision to skip essential prescriptions for conditions like high blood pressure or heart arrhythmias. Abruptly stopping a blood pressure medication can cause rebound hypertension, a dangerous spike in your pressure. Similarly, skipping a critical heart rhythm medication, even for a single day, can carry significant risks. Always have a clear plan with your doctor about which medications to take with a small sip of water and which, if any, to postpone. Mistake number three, hitting the gym hard right before your test. While exercise is fantastic for your health, a vigorous workout session can make a perfectly healthy person's labs look alarming. Vigorous physical activity, like a heavy weightlifting session or a long run, causes micro tears in muscle fibers. Your body responds by releasing an enzyme, creatine kinase, CK, into the bloodstream. Elevated CK is a marker doctors use to detect muscle injury, so an exercise-induced spike could trigger a false alarm. Exercise can also temporarily elevate creatinine levels, a key indicator of kidney health, potentially creating a false panic about renal dysfunction. To ensure your results reflect your baseline health, stick to gentle activity like a light walk the day before your test and avoid any strenuous exercise on the morning of your draw. Mistake number four is insufficient hydration. Being dehydrated presents two problems. First, it causes your veins to constrict and become less pliable, making them much harder for the phlebotomist to locate and access. This can lead to a more difficult and sometimes unsuccessful blood draw. Second, lack of water leads to hemoconcentration, meaning the solid components of your blood are less diluted. This can falsely elevate values for red blood cells, calcium, and key proteins, including those used to assess kidney function. Make a conscious effort to hydrate well the day before your test and drink a full glass of water on the morning of, unless you have been given very specific instructions to the contrary, which is exceedingly rare. Mistake number five is having your blood tested during a significant but temporary change in your lifestyle. Your lab results should reflect your normal day-to-day -day state, not a recent anomaly. For instance, if you just returned from a long weekend celebrating a wedding, with several nights of rich food and alcohol, that is not the ideal time to check your liver function or cholesterol. Alcohol consumption can cause a transient spike in liver enzymes like GGT 
as well as triglycerides. The results won't be an accurate snapshot of your health, and your doctor will likely just have you repeat the test in a few weeks. The same principle applies if you're recovering from a bout of the flu and are taking over-the-counter cold medicines, many of which are processed by the liver and can temporarily alter its function. Now, sometimes we do want to check labs while on a medication, for instance, to monitor the effects of a new cholesterol drug. But for routine screening, schedule your tests for a time that represents your baseline. Mistake number six is taking supplements that chemically interfere with the test itself. And the most notorious offender here is biotin. Biotin, or vitamin B7, is a star ingredient in many hair, skin, and nail supplements. To be clear, biotin is not harmful to your thyroid gland. The problem is a chemical one that happens inside the lab's testing machine. Many modern thyroid tests use a biotin streptavidin binding system. It's a core part of the test's chemistry. High levels of biotin in your blood sample flood this system and interfere with the reaction, leading to a falsely suppressed thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH, result. This could lead your physician to mistakenly diagnose hyperthyroidism or inappropriately reduce your thyroid medication dosage, causing you to become hypothyroid and feel unwell. It's a simple interference with a serious consequence. Discontinue any supplements containing biotin for at least 72 hours before having your thyroid levels checked, and always list it on your medication sheet. Mistake number seven is testing hormones without regard to the body's clock. Many hormones operate on a strict circadian rhythm. Testosterone is a prime example. Its production follows a distinct diurnal pattern, peaking shortly after waking and declining throughout the day. A test drawn at 4 p.m. could yield a falsely low number, potentially leading to an unnecessary workup for low T. This is why guidelines mandate an early morning draw, typically before 10 a.m. Cortisol is even more timing dependent. To investigate adrenal insufficiency, low cortisol, we must measure it at its expected peak, around 8 a.m. A low level at that time is highly significant. Conversely, to screen for Cushing's syndrome, excess cortisol, we need to see if it's high when it should be at its lowest point, or nadir, which occurs around midnight, often requiring a special saliva collection kit used at home. And remember, pulling an all-nighter throws this entire rhythm into disarray, rendering a morning hormone test unreliable. Mistake number eight is failing to disclose all substances you're taking. Many people remember to list their prescriptions but forget about things from alternative practitioners, online clinics, or even high-dose supplements from the health food store. I saw a case where a young, healthy man's kidney function tests appeared slightly off. His doctor was concerned. After much discussion, the patient finally mentioned he was taking large doses of creatine monohydrate, a very common bodybuilding supplement. Creatine is metabolized into creatinine, the very marker we use to measure kidney function. This one piece of information reframed the entire clinical picture from potential kidney disease to expected and harmless effect of a supplement. Be exhaustive. Tell your doctor everything. Mistake number nine is retesting too quickly after a medication change. Your doctor starts you on a new blood pressure pill or adjusts your Synthroid dose and asks you to recheck labs in six weeks but you're eager and go after just two. The results may not show much of an improvement, leading to frustration and a potentially premature and incorrect second change in your therapy. Most medications require a certain period, days or often weeks, to reach a steady state in your bloodstream where their effect is consistent and can be accurately measured. Adhere to the follow-up timeline your doctor provides. Give the medicine time to work. And finally, mistake number 10 waiting until the very last minute. Procrastinating on your lab work until the day before your doctor's appointment creates a high risk that the results won't be processed and reported in time. The temptation then is to reschedule the appointment, but this can be a crucial error. Even a partial report can contain vital, time-sensitive information. We might see critically low potassium levels or a dangerously high white blood cell count that requires immediate attention, even if the rest of the panel is still pending. Don't cancel your visit. It's far better to review the available data and address any urgent issues than to delay care. Proper preparation for a blood test isn't just a matter of convenience. It's a critical component of accurate diagnostics. 
Getting it right the first time ensures your doctor has the highest quality information to work with, saving you time, stress, and repeat appointments. If you found this information valuable, please give this video a like, subscribe for more content, and share it with anyone you know who has a lab appointment on their calendar. Remember, this content is for educational purposes and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.